everyone. Today we're going to talk about pressure sores. Pressure sores can be classified into one of four stages depending on the extent of tissue injury. So today we're going to go over the characteristics of each stage as well as unstageable pressure sores and deep tissue pressure injuries. So let's get started. Pressure sores, also known as pressure injuries, used to be called pressure ulcers. However, the National Pressure Advisory Panel replaced the name pressure ulcer with pressure injury. They did this to better represent those earlier stages of pressure injuries where there is no actual ulcer or break in the skin. Pressure sores occur when capillary blood flow to an area is reduced. This may happen when the skin over a bony prominence is compressed between the weight of the body and a supporting surface for a long period of time, or when there is pressure on the soft tissue in combination with shear or friction. Now, there are some locations on the body in which pressure sores are more commonly acquired, such as the coccyx, sacrum or lower spine, the hips, heels of the feet, elbows, shoulders, ears, and the back of the head. These locations are often referred to as pressure points. So now the fun part. First is the stage 1 pressure sore. These sores are classified as non-blankable redness, meaning that the area does not turn white when you press down on it. Now, a stage 1 pressure sore on darkly pigmented skin may not have visible redness, but as you can see in this picture here, its color may differ from the surrounding tissue. The skin of a stage 1 pressure sore is still intact, so there is no break in the skin. The area, however, may be painful, firm, soft, warmer or cooler than nearby tissue. Also, one thing you want to make sure you never do is massage the retinal area. Massaging the area increases friction and adds to the already compromised tissue. The next stage is stage 2. Stage 2 pressure sores are sometimes described as a skin tear or shallow break in the skin. There is redness present that may be accompanied by blisters. Stage 2 pressure sores can lead to microbial growth and wound infection because again, the skin is now open in this stage. Now before we get into what a stage 3 and stage 4 pressure sore would look like, I want you guys to understand that there are certain characteristics we will begin to see in these stage 3 and stage 4 wounds that we would not see in stage 1 and stage 2 pressure sores. So we're going to talk about these terms now to make it easier for when we get into stage 3 and stage 4. Let's start with a pibbly. A pibbly is when the edges of the wound begin to roll or curl under. We will also begin to see slough and eschar, which is necrotic non-living tissue. Eschar has a hard, dry, leathery texture, while slough presents as a loose, moist, stringy liquid. The color of slough may be yellow, brown, or green. Another common characteristic of stage 3 and stage 4 pressure sores is drainage. There may be serous drainage, which is a clear colored fluid made up of leaking plasma. A small amount of serous drainage is normal and could indicate that the wound is healing. However, if you see excessive amounts of serous drainage, then you should notify the doctor. Next is purulent drainage. Purulent drainage indicates that the wound is infected. Its color may be yellow, green, or brown with a foul odor. Purulent drainage is made up of white blood cells that are trying to fight off the wound infection. It may also be composed of bacteria that is expelled from the wound. Stage 3 and stage 4 pressure sores may also have tunneling. And tunneling is exactly what it sounds like. It's when the wound creates a tunnel or passageway underneath the skin. And then there is undermining, which is when the skin underneath the wound is destroyed, causing something like a pocket to form underneath the edge of the wound. So now that we went over the common characteristics of stage 3 and stage 4 pressure sores, let's finally get into them. A stage 3 pressure sore is often described as a shallow crater that extends to subcutaneous tissue. Now you may be able to see the subcutaneous tissue, but there is no bone, tendon, or muscle exposed in a stage 3 pressure injury. The edges of the wound may begin to roll so epibole, slough or eschar may be present, there may be serous drainage or purulent drainage, it just depends on if the wound is infected or not. Undermining and tunneling are also likely to occur. 
Now, when I was in nursing school, my textbooks would describe stage three pressure sores as painless. But I don't think that's a good description because I've definitely had some patients who stage three wound caused them pain. But hey, I guess for exam's sake, painless, just make sure you assess your patient's pain level. Stage four pressure injuries are the most traumatic and life-threatening. The tissue of a stage four pressure injury is deeply ulcerated. Bone, cartilage, ligament, tendon, fascia, and or muscle is exposed. There is sloth or eschar. Undermining and tunneling often occur. The dead tissue will produce a foul odor, and infection in these wounds can easily spread throughout the body and cause sepsis. So remember, stage three pressure sores expose subcutaneous tissue, while stage four pressure sores extend deeper than the subcutaneous tissue, exposing muscle or bone. When there is so much sloth and eschar in the wound that it prevents you from being able to see how deep the pressure sore is, then the pressure sore is considered unstageable. Now, when the slough is removed, it will either be a stage three or stage four pressure injury because remember we said that slough or eschar doesn't appear in stage one or two pressure injuries. But either way, the slough or eschar has to be removed first before the wound can be staged. Both slough and eschar are removed through a process called debridement. Debridement is when necrotic or infected tissue is naturally, mechanically, enzymatically, or surgically removed. Now, in order for eschar to be debrided, it has to be mobile. Stable eschar cannot be removed. Lastly, but certainly not least, let's go over deep tissue pressure injuries and then I'll let you guys go. A deep tissue pressure injury can be defined in two ways. One, as purple, deep red, or maroon discoloration of intact or non-intact skin. Or two, separation of the epidermis that produces a dark wound bed or blood-filled blister. Deep tissue pressure injuries result from prolonged and intense pressure where the bone and muscle meet. The area may be painful, mushy, boggy, or firm. Also, its temperature may be different from the surrounding tissue. All right, everyone, that brings this video to an end. Please be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Remember to never give up. And as always, thanks for watching.